Good, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Flexi webinar. My name is Bennett. I'll be the moderator today, and our presenter is Aaron Clapp. He's our application specialist at SAI. He knows everything there is to know about Flexi, and today he'll be walking through the features of Flexi's new user data backup. That'll be importing things like ICC profiles, preferences, templates, and making backups of your data. After the presentation, we'll be able to answer any questions you have, either about this feature or any other Flexi topics. So feel free to put those in those questions in the chat and we'll answer as many as we can. And we are recording the webinar as always. So if you want to review anything Aaron discusses, save it or share it with someone else, we'll be sending you all the link here this afternoon. So look out for that. And with that, I think we're ready to get started. So I'll turn the presentation over to Aaron. All right, sounds good. So um, we're really excited about this new feature for user backup and uh, uh, and, and settings backups for, for Flexi 21. Uh, the new Flexi uh, version is out. So if uh, you haven't seen it or haven't heard about it or haven't installed it, uh, I definitely recommend uh, getting in there and uh, going into your cloud account and downloading and installing it should be available for download for all users uh, that have a subscription. So I uh, highly would recommend getting in there and downloading and installing it. So if you haven't done that yet, uh, find some time maybe when the, the work's a little slow and, and upgrade to 21. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. There's a lot of new features and things packed in here. Uh, so we're going to be going in the, in the next several web webinars. We're going to be kind of going over some of these new New topics. And one of the ones that we want to talk about today was just the user backup. Now, this is one of those things that I think that is a little bit, uh, could be possibly underrated when you look at it in like a stat sheet for what's new in Flexi 21. But uh, I really do think that this is going to be a little bit of a game changer in terms of it's going to really help you with your workflow. And, and when you do update or if you if you have to reinstall or if you get a new PC, anything like that, this can be a, a really helpful tool to make the transition in any of those cases uh, smoother and easier. So I know in the past there, there have always been times when we try and copy your preferences with a little application called the Preference Manager in, in Flexi. Uh, it was a little application that if you go to your start menu and we'll just pull it up here, uh, we go to Flexi 19, we'll just go there, for example, and then you see the preference manager. Now, that did an okay job of, of, of backing up preferences, but it was in kind of an inconvenient location. It really wasn't easy to find sometimes, and it wasn't super consistent. And so we tried to figure out, okay, what's what's the best way that, or an easier way that we can allow users to back up their data on a regular basis so that anything does happen, even by accident, they got their data backed up. That means your profiles and, and all kinds of different things. And we'll look at the list of stuff that you can save here. So the the thing for us was let's let's make this transition process a little bit simpler for our users so that it's not quite as much of a pain to go from one version to another or even to transfer to a brand new PC that you might just have gotten. So let's just kind of look into what we're doing here. So first of all, let's just uh, go to our edit menu and go to preferences. This is where our backup feature is going to be. So we got two buttons down here under the general tab. You got a backup button and a restore button. So if I click backup, it's going to bring up this little window right here. Now, the nice thing, and we already thought about this ahead of time, is that we decided to store the backups in a separate folder. So it doesn't matter what you do to Flexi. You can uninstall it, delete it. A virus or antivirus program could wipe out the entire folder. It doesn't really matter because we store these in a separate location. So if somebody uninstalls your program accidentally or whatever happens, this is stored in a separate location. So now the good thing is, is this can be uh, stored in a backup program. So if you have some kind of automatic backing up program that backs up Windows for you, 
this would be included in that, you know, uh, in that program, you can include this folder in there. You can also change the directory. So if you'd prefer it to go, let's say, into my documents or something like that, where your backup program frequently backs stuff up, or if you want to put this on a server, that would be fine. So the key is here that is that it's not in the same folder as your install, because typically what would happen is if you're using the old preference manager, if you uninstalled the program and then reinstalled, all those preferences were gone, uh, unless you had saved them specifically. The nice thing is here is you can do this automatically and set it up, and then it saves in this folder kind of without even you uh, thinking about it. So one of the nice things that we've added is that we've added an automatic backup option. Now you can turn this off if you don't want it on, but uh, you can tell it in days, how many days you want it to, to back up. So this could be once a week, once every 30 days, you know, this could be every day. Say you want to have this save every day and that would be perfectly fine. Or, you even have the option to click backup now and it'll instantly back up everything as it is just as, as you see it. And so all of your jobs and stuff like that. So you can just hit that backup button real quick. If you feel like, Hey, uh, I need to do a reinstall of my computer or I'm doing a new upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and back up my settings real quick to back up. And then you can go to the new computer and then, and, and then pick up those settings. So this is going to be a real nice thing to have. Setting it on a timer where you don't have to think about it, Flex is just going to automatically back those up for you uh, and save those files so that you can pick them up later. Now, what are the kind of the stuff that that we're that we're saving? Well, the, the nice thing is for production manager, anything in the variable dot profiles, your jig layouts. So if you've, this is one of the new tools in Flexi 21, the jig tool. So jig layouts, ICC profiles, any presets you have for any of your printers or cutters, uh, preferences, uh, including job lists and, and things like that, those will all be saved. We've got all kinds of different things in here as well. Like, for example, if you create any tools or uh, in your engrave library, templates, if you created any custom swatches and save those, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to save those and copy them. Uh, so if I came down here and edited this swatch and added a bunch of colors to it, it would save those. Uh, templates, uh, things like that, your preferences. Uh, so all the kinds of things that you would want to save and pull over from another version, we've all included that in here. And so that's what's really nice about this setup. So I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And we're going to just click on this option. So now if you're in the option where you're trying to restore, all you have to do is click restore. And it'll actually tell you the same screen, basically. And it'll actually give you the options as to which options you want to restore and which ones you don't. Um, in this case, I'm going to just have them all selected because why not, right? So I'm going to say click this download list. And you can see here that I've already saved a bunch of these for today. And this is just me testing it out and wanting to make sure that uh, I had a list so you, I, I, I could show you. But I backed it up multiple times today at different periods, and it just kept on adding. So it's got the date, and then, of course, if you created a save uh, on the same day, it just adds a two, a three, a four, five, a six. So it just gets duplicated there. So you can back this up as many times as you want, and you can go back to any one of these. And that's the nice thing is it stores these each differently. So whatever the settings were for this one, if they're different from this one and I load these in, it'll do that. So why don't we set up a little bit of a scenario here where we back up some files. Uh, and I want to specifically demonstrate that inside of a production manager with your jobs. So let's go ahead and OK. And we're going to pull up production manager here. All right, so I've got a, a, a printer and a cutter. Why don't I go ahead and add another cutter to my list here just for fun? And let's just say this one's going to be a Suma. And we'll just grab any one of these. Uh, let's go with the T-Series. Next. Finish. 
Okay, so now we got three devices in there. Let's go ahead and send a couple jobs. So maybe maybe we import uh, something here. Let's go to my document and go to Flexi, Flexi samples here, and maybe we'll just pull. Uh, let's let's go to vinyl signs. This is better. There we go. Just pull this in here, and maybe let's go ahead and throw a contour cut on here just for fun, so that we get jobs sent to the cutter and to the printer. So we'll apply that, and. Let's hit rip and print. So we'll just say on this computer, that is fine. And I'm gonna maybe just, I'm gonna hit hold and list so that it doesn't try to send to a printer that doesn't, it's not actually connected. So I'm gonna say this, I wanna send it as separate jobs. We'll go ahead and hit send. So we have got a job under the MUTO and we've also got a job under the SUMA. So let's hit done. Maybe we'll delete this. Let's go grab shapes here and some text. I'm a hard time typing. Okay. So then we're just going to do this one. We'll send this one to the graph tech. And we'll say, hold on list. And let's just send the three copies of that. All right, so in our demo, we've got some jobs in our production manager uh, for the cutter for the 9,000. We've got a, a cut job here. We also have a print job. So let's go ahead and close this. I'm gonna, actually, we'll leave this open for now. I'm gonna go back to my preferences. So edit menu preferences. I'm gonna go ahead and hit backup. And I'm gonna say, do everything and backup now. So it's going to quickly back up all that information, and then we're just going to hit OK. And then hit OK again. And now at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and clear Flexi out here. And I'm going to turn my production manager off. And I am going to go into the preferences. And just kind of as a demonstration here, I'm going to open up the preference manager. And I'm going to restore everything back to factory defaults. So now if I pull up my production manager, you can see that I have an empty queue. There's no devices. There's nothing in here. I have to add everything back in. So this would be like if we were doing a fresh new install. So I'm going to close that, pull up Flexi. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my edit. I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to say, let's restore. And it obviously picked the most recent one. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that one, check all the boxes, and hit restore. And it's going to load in all the files for me. And at this point, I'm kind of ready to go. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to close down Flexi just for good measure here. And then I'm going to launch both our programs, Flexi and Production Manager. So just like that, we've got all of our jobs sitting there and our devices all just like they were. So we've got our cut job for our SUMA. We've got our three cut jobs under our graph tech. And now we've got our job sitting here that we sent for our MUTO. So just that easy, you can have all of your preferences restored right into your install, which is a, a huge game changer. So this is, this is going to be really helpful. So now, well, that works great if we're on the same PC and everything like that. What if, what if we have a different install? Well, let's close our Flexi down. I actually have a different install. So this is a completely different install from the one that we're using down here below. And all we would do, in fact, we can even go back to, to this one here. I have several installs here. And so we can go into Flexi 21. And the great thing is, is that even if, as long as you copy that folder where you're saving your, your preferences to, they'll all show up there. So if I go into preferences, 
and I go to restore. Now this one is storing them in a little bit different folder, so I need to probably see here, browse, can we load in? Let's see, let me uh, restart this here. Let's go back to our other one here because I know it was working over here on this one. So let's just go back into 21. So this is a different install here. And let's go to edit preferences, restore. There we go. So they're all in there. So as long as we have the folder path set the same, which is under our backup, we can set this to wherever we want to. We can back it up. So when I move to a new computer, all I would do is make sure and copy this folder over and it would pull in all those jobs for me automatically. So this is going to be, this is a really great tool. Again, this will pull in your ICC profiles your presets, and, and those are kind of some of the big things, the big items, right? Your presets, your profiles, um, jig templates are going to be really important because if you're using those a lot, uh, you'll be you'll want to save those. Uh, some of the key ones on the Flexi side is going to be like your color swatches, your templates, uh, any variable data templates that you've created. So variable data is a new feature in Flexi. And so if you've done anything with variable data, you're going to want to save that. Uh, so it's going to basically pull everything over. And the really important thing is here is that it saves everything in your preferences too. So the I don't know if you've ever had this trouble before where you maybe go to a new computer or something, and all of a sudden the color's not quite right or something's just a little off. This is going to really help you ensure that when you transition from one computer to another, or you're moving from one install to another, from Flexi 19 to, to 21, or from 21 to another version, or if you're going from new install to new install, all of those preferences get pulled over. That's going to be a really important thing for you guys. And so we really think that this is going to be a great option for you guys. It makes things so much simpler. It puts it inside the program. So you don't have to go searching for it in some folder inside of Flexi somewhere to, to save your preferences. And this is going to be a lot more consistent uh, in terms of you know, what it can install or what it can pull in and the preferences. And it has a much broader capability in terms of what it can import. So I know this one's kind of a short episode today, but... We really wanted to show you this, especially for those who are going to be starting new with Flexi 21. We want to make sure that you guys are saving those preferences so that if anything does happen, you have them available for you. So uh, because we know that we'll be putting out updates and perhaps maybe some of you guys might be running on a computer that doesn't take advantage of 64-bit now that Flexi 21 is 64-bit through and through the designer and the production manager. Maybe there'll be a new computer in order or something like that. So this is going to be able to give you the ability to start on whatever computer you're on and move to another PC and not have to worry about color problems and preferences and did I copy everything correctly. And it'll also save you a call to tech support. Uh, makes it a lot easier. You can just copy everything over and it's super simple. So do we have any questions on this or, or anything regarding Flexi in general? Uh, that you might be interested in. Thanks for Thanks. going, for that, Aaron. Wait a minute here and see if there are any questions coming in. Any questions about 
user data backup or any other Flexi related questions. So Joseph there looks like, uh, he says you changed your contour cut to magenta. Um, you can do that. Uh, but when I apply the contour cut, it's still gray. Okay, so uh, depending on So depending on how you do that will depend on 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 how that works. So let's just grab an, an item here. So there is a there's two functions, and I'm not I'm I'm wondering if you're using uh, uh, one of these options. So if you go to the option under arrange, contour cut, make contour cut, and click this option. That one is always going to default to the gray color. So if you do it in this one, uh, it'll always be gray. Now, if you do it the other way, let's go back, and you go to contour cut, you're going to want to assign your contour cut color here. Uh, whoops, not in there, Design Central. In Design Central. So I can click here and change your contour cut color. Uh, if you apply the contour cut color as gray and then go back and change it, uh, I would probably not advise doing that. Um, the reason why would be because uh, the way that the software sees contour cuts and things like that, there's some metadata in there. I would recommend just if you're going to change it to magenta or something else, do it from in here. Now, uh, don't just select it and then click on a color down here. I would go ahead and just reassign the color up here. And any of your color swatches that you load in will always be in this little drop-down box. So that's where I would do it. So if I change it to uh, red, for example, and hit apply, now that will be applied as res, as opposed to trying to click on it and change it uh, by, by doing this or, or something like that. Uh, or separating it and changing the color, that's that's going to be a little bit different. But yeah, that should work. Now, I will warn you about changing colors. If you are going to move to a different RIP software, so for example, if you use our software to design and then you RIP in a different application, uh, you may want to not use just a plain old magenta color. Uh, it is an industry standard uh, on these contour cuts, and that's why they're labeled this way. Uh, so if I take this contour cut color or this perf cut color, any one of these, and I send it, say, over to Roland VersaWorks or Rasterlink or uh, Caldera, it doesn't matter where you send it to, Adobe Illustrator uh, or CorelDRAW, a lot of places that allow you to, or programs that recognize contour cuts will recognize this naming scheme. So I would use these instead. If you still want to use pink and you also want to use a different rip, then what I would probably do is go in and edit this color and just change it. So for example, I can right click on this and go to color specs. And then I could just go in here and then change the color of what it is here uh, and then just change it to magenta or something like that. So uh, then that way it's still called cut contour uh, but it has a different color to it. So anyway, just be aware of that. As long as you're within the Flexi ecosystem, though, uh, Flexi understands, even though that's not labeled cut contour, that is still a cut contour. So you'll be okay there. It's just if you go to other applications where you might run into that trouble. Yeah, Aaron, you may have seen Joseph said he did that, but... Um, I didn't use the color that he chose. So uh, this one, um, so you know, I would really kind of want to try and see what it is that's happening specifically. And this is maybe something we need to talk with tech support about, and just kind of have them have you reach out to them and see if they can figure it out because they're. Um, as you can see here, it's it's working here when I apply it. 
Um, and I, when I go into here, I could also change it, um, or I can even create my own custom color if I want. Um, so, in fact, that might actually be a, an, an even better option to just create a new custom color. But uh, I would have, I would, I would take a look at have tech support take a look at it and see. If uh, if it's maybe an issue with something that in your install, uh, but you should be able to change it without any issues. All right, thanks, Aaron. Any other questions before we leave? We'll wait a couple more seconds. <clears throat> Yes, if you're, uh, and just uh, to answer, I think Kelly asked a question, uh, you can download it from saicloud.com. So if you go to saicloud.com and you log in with your account, you can just download the latest version if you're on a subscription. Uh, so that's, it's, that's the easiest way to get it. So saicloud.com, log in, and then just download the newest version from, uh, from that cloud account. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you all for joining us for today's Flexi webinar. Make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter so you don't miss out on any webinars or other announcements. Our next Flexi webinar will be about another new Flexi feature. That'll be Jig Templates on June 8th, and we hope to see you there. Thank you again for attending. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.